for us from John 10, 1 through 10. If we heard one thing in that message, what would we take from it? We would take that Jesus is the gate, that Jesus is the Savior, Jesus is the one who brings us that abundant life. Roll all of that together and you have a message that says that it's all about Jesus. So if we are looking for a leader, it should be Jesus. This reminds me of every Sunday school lesson I've ever had in my young days. The Sunday school teacher would ask a question and what would the student respond? Jesus. Jesus every time. And it's right. <laughs> because Jesus is always the right answer in Sunday school. There's a lot more in this scripture than just Jesus is the gate. But I want to emphasize first and foremost, and the last thing that I want to emphasize when I leave today, is that Jesus is the gate. It's through Jesus, and Jesus even says here as he's doing this teaching, that there have been others before him, but they've been thieves and bandits. Jesus wants to say that he is the way. And he, later on in, in other Gospels, he says it in different ways. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is pointing out something that has been misunderstood and uh, maybe even now just changed now that Jesus has come to save the world. And that is that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the gate. Now, Craig, perfect choice for your song. You know, I don't know how that happens, but when we think of this scripture overall, the thematic element is the shepherd and his sheep. And that's what we just sang about. I have a couple of other messages for you other than Jesus is the gate. One, I'm going to write on this because it's just fun to write on this and to spell this out. Let me see if you can see this. I didn't break out the easel because I, I don't want to put this on display the whole time. I want to hide it away real quick. But can you guys read this? Back there, Sharon Ship. Can you, what does it say now? Oh, this marker. It's been like three years since I've used this thing. And now it's, it's, you know. Sheeps is, Sheeps is dumb. <laughs> that's my, that's my other message that one of the messages I want to share with you. You're welcome. Who, who's the sheep in this story? Who, who are the sheeps? Sheeps is dumb. I'm one of them too. And unfortunately, when you see sheep, you may not know that right away, but they're not the smartest of animals. They do know something, though, and Jesus points it out. What does, what does the sheep know? They know the shepherd's voice. And, it, and here's the beautiful thing, dum-dums. <laughs> here's the beautiful thing about being a dum-dum. I mean, let me just say, first of all, if you don't believe me that we're all dum-dums, how many times do we have to make the same mistakes? I mean, I've made the same mistakes over and over and over again. And it's truly an accomplishment now when I just find new ways to make mistakes and not do the same one over and over again. I'm growing. <laughs> I'm finding new ways. Yay. Right? We do the same things over and over again, and sometimes we even expect different results and things to change in our life without us doing much to change them and be a part of that change. And 
Here's the beautiful thing. The thing that we need to know, we can recognize. We have to hear the shepherd's voice. As long as we can know God's voice, we're going to be okay. Isn't that a beautiful thought? Now, when we're ready to do something that is a big life decision, sometimes even small ones, I mean, you know, I've used the analogy, God didn't tell me what pants to put on this morning or anything like that. I don't believe, you know, I have to, I don't need an answer from God for everything. I can make some decisions. But when, when life decisions are there and they can change the way life goes, the beautiful thing is that God is always there. God is there every moment for us. He doesn't always speak, and sometimes he's silent because we're in the exact right spot or he's teaching us a lesson, and it's not time to move on. It's not time to do something else. It's sort of sometimes like a timeout where you, you have a child that has been misbehaving, and they need to just sit and think about what they've done. The worst thing that a kid does in that timeout is just sit there and cry and not consider what's happening or why they're there. It was sometimes we behave like that as as those sheep. And sometimes we're like, ah! and God, and we complain, and we go through all those emotions, and then we do all these things, but sometimes God does just stay silent, and that's okay too. It doesn't mean that God's gone. We can hear His voice and recognize it, and I love that Scripture is a part of that. Because as we read the Scripture, this might sound like a basic message, right? But it's a great, beautiful reminder that we don't have it all figured out. We don't all have the answers. And the other thing, when we look at this scripture and we see that there's the thief and the bandits, I, I know that Jesus may have been talking about something that had come prior. Maybe he was talking about other gods or even other teachers that claimed to be Savior or claim to be something that they were not. When we apply that to our world today, it's so important to remember that the voice that we're listening to for and following is Jesus's. Unfortunately, there are many people in our culture that will become attracted to people and teachers and follow just that teacher all the way to ruin and destruction many times. Now, there are great shepherds, and I hope to be one, but I'm not the great shepherd. I know that the voice that we need is not my voice. The voice that we need is Jesus' voice. Our great shepherd has something for each and every one of us. When we are lonely, when we are hurting, when we are sick, when we are in any kind of trouble, that voice is the voice that you need. I know that it's great to hear the voice of people that love us, that are around us, or to feel their touch and their presence, but ultimately the touch, the presence that we need is from the great shepherd, isn't it? Boy, how grateful can we be today that we have that? How grateful does that make us Jesus, thank you for speaking to us. When we follow and put our faith in other people, ultimately, that will fail. We see the thieves and the bandits, they fall. They fall into sin, great sin many times, and they are exposed. I looked up a little bit about what a bandit was. I love the, the thought that a thief steals does their work secretly, but a bandit does it openly, almost as if they're a fraud. They fraudulently claim to be something, or they deceive you, they trick you. And there are so many stories that we know of, so many times that we've been sort of bamboozled. Have you ever been bamboozled? And we don't really use that word too much, but... Have you ever been deceived into giving away your wealth? I'm talking money, of course. 
Yeah, you may have been, and it's embarrassing. It, you, 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 feel, you feel like a dum-dum, don't you? <laughs> really, ultimately, we can all fall into those traps. We can all fall into that deceit. Because thieves and bandits are very good at being thieves and bandits. But what they steal here that Jesus is talking and in the world that Jesus is talking about is not our money, but it's something different. When we put our faith in people as to be our savior, we're giving up something, aren't we? We give up our spiritual growth. Jesus says at the very end of this, I think it's verse 10, the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And you could create some kind of beautiful symmetry with what that might be that he's, the thief steals, kills, and destroys. But I know that when we place our trust in someone other than Jesus as Savior, we are robbed of our spiritual growth. There's no doubt about it. We've been stolen from. And he, we've been killed in a sense if we ultimately don't follow Jesus but follow someone else. We tend to wander. As sheep, we will sometimes wander around. And the thief coming to st steal, kill, and destroy, which destroys sort of like ruining something, the thief will ruin your life, ruin your peace, kill your peace, and cause you to have fear. Even our spiritual food becomes stolen so that we miss out on that daily bread, that daily sustenance. The things that give us joy when we read the Word, that excitement is something that you need on a daily basis. Unless you're reading the genealogies, maybe just skip over that part. <laughs> Jessica recently shared with me that she had never really read the genealogies before, but there was something that she got excited about reading the genealogies. I was like, okay, <laughs> good on you. She went through and explained it. I've already forgotten it, but I do remember. It was kind of interesting. It's kind of neat to see that. Why, why did Jesus, why, or why did God put all that in there? What is that? There's, there is a point. There is a purpose. <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes I do become afraid. Sheep can easily become afraid. And maybe Psalm 23 could speak to us as the sheep today. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Is it, wasn't that in the song that we just sang? Yes, yes. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And I'm going to go back now to John 10. The last statement he makes in verse 10. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. So today, let's remember that our great shepherd wants us to have life and to have it abundantly. Lord, as our great shepherd today, 
Take away our fear. Take away all of those things in our life that we feel and experience that we need not feel and experience. As our great shepherd, let us hear your voice. Let it calm us. And when necessary, guide us with your rod or staff. As our great shepherd, let us hear your voice only. You are the gatekeeper. You are the Savior. Lord, save us. Amen.